We shall be reading from the Gospel of Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, from the New King James Version. The Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 7, chapter 7, verse 1. Judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged, and with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And let me repeat this please. Judge not that you be not judged, for with what judgment you judge, you will be judged, and with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye, and look, a plank is in your own eye? Hypocrite! First remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet, and turn and tear you in pieces. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. Or what man is there among you who, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give good things to those who ask Him? Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes, or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore by their fruit you will know them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? Then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Therefore whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. This is Zedekiah, and great was his fall. And before us, my brethren, is opening the prophetical word of God, in which it's good that we have assured and we are careful with all cautiousness as a lamp 
which shines in the darkness. Only the prophetical word can guide us in a dark place in safety because it is like a lamp which shines. Just think of this image in pitch black dark surroundings. Your eyes see nothing and you can't see the way of safety. You cannot see the cliff. You can't see the traps. You can't see the holes in the ground. You see nothing. And you have to walk. And there is a voice on one side, the voice of the false prophets, which come to you dressed in sheep clothing, in sweetness, with good manners, with friendships, with offering of sins, of having a good time. But inside they are ravenous wolves. And on the other side, there is someone with a small lamp, a little lamp. He doesn't talk to you, but he says only, here it is, what will you choose? The voice of flattering words in which you hear in the darkness and you see nothing, or the little lamp which will give you light. And you can walk slowly, yes, you won't run, with all cautiousness, in a careful way, but in safety. And God's proposition is for us to choose the prophetical word. Today, now, we haven't got another choice. We don't want to be, after 11 years, in Zedekiah's situation. And we will reach that point in that situation if we are not careful. But we want the lamp that shines. A little lamp. But with this lamp, you see the traps before you. You see, so you won't stumble. You see the cliffs and you see the good way. You see the narrow gate. A few find it. And for them to find it, I must seek it. Wide is the gate. And broad is a way that leads to destruction. Many go in by it. They don't seek for something else. They find it before them and they enter. But narrow is a gate and difficult is a way. But a few find it. You must try and find the narrow gate. The wide gate, you've got it before you. Go on. If you want. If you're not frightened, if you don't care, it's the voice of the false prophets, it's the voice of lies, darkness, transgression, iniquity, sin, wickedness, revenge, strictness, hardness, war, envy, wickedness. It's before you, but there is another small gate, narrow, which cannot be seen. You cannot find it, you have to seek for it so you can find it. And no matter how much you seek for it, you cannot find it if you haven't got the lamp, which is the Word of God. If you haven't got that lamp, when you try and seek it, you'll find it at once with the lamp and enter it at once. And don't wait now in this way, for you have joy, good times, but await sorrows, trials and the blessings from God, the protection of God, the presence of God, and our choice between the wide and narrow gate is, my beloved brethren, the end of all things. It's not the beginning, it's not the way, it's the end, the finish line. After the trumpet, for me to be up there and not down here. Amen. That's what we are striving for. After the trumpet is blown for me to be before Christ with all of you. How horrible it would be that after the trumpet is blown for me to be down here without you all here on my own. May God keep us safe. My brethren, a nice invitation from God. Let's try and seek the narrow gate. We will find it, but through the word of God. Let's start searching for it. 
Let's not walk by chance in the air. And especially, let's not listen to the voice of this world which is surrendered to the devil and Satan who is the prince of this world. Let's not listen to the voice of our own hearts which is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Let's not listen to the voice of our sentiments which will lead us far from God. But let's try and find, seek to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Try and find and seek to listen to the voice of Christ. To bow down with seriousness to the King's law of freedom. To the freedom of the Holy Spirit. So our footsteps could be, doesn't matter, slowly. Yes, the way is difficult. It doesn't matter with sorrows. The way is difficult. But for our footsteps to be stable, unmovable, which will lead us to everlasting life. And God has nice examples, the voice of the false prophets and the voice of the Holy Spirit. Do not judge that you not be judged. The Word of God. Judge, judge, condemn, criticize. Can't you see Him? What voice will you listen to? Learn. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. You judge in gentleness, you'll be judged in gentleness. A man doesn't say this, the word of God says this. Do you judge in a forgiving way? Or with stubbornness like Zedekiah, in strictness and hardness, you will be measured in the same way. You see the difference of lies and truth, the prophetical word and the word of the false prophets. And with a measure you use, it will be measured back to you. How do you measure your brother? How do you measure your brother? How do you weigh him as someone useless, someone who's not capable of anything, unimportant, a fool? Forgive me God. How do you judge him? An imposter, a liar. You were measured in the same way. Exactly. Because the decisions in which you will make that will not have the protection of God. Why do you see the speck in your brother's eye? The false prophet's words say, Look, look at the speck in his eye. How can he see properly? But the prophetical word says, Don't look at your brother. Look in the mirror, which is the word of God. And look, and you shall see that you have a plank in your own eye. Don't have to do with the speck in your brother's eye. Take out your plank out of your own eye. Beloved brethren, our lives, the more it goes on, will become more and more difficult. In our relationship with people, in our relationship with our relatives, in our relationship with our brethren, in our relationship with ourselves, and in the end, our relationship with God, because times are evil and they'll become worse and worse. If today we don't make a decision to submit ourselves to the voice of the Holy Spirit, to the voice of the Word of God, we are in danger of ending up like Zedekiah. Today we will make that decision. Today we will turn our eyes, not to the person next to us, but inside of us. Today we shall stand before God. Today we shall work out our salvation in fear and trembling. Our own, not someone else's salvation. My salvation, not my daughter-in-laws, not my brother-in-laws, not my husbands, not my sons, not my fathers, not my brothers, not the elders. Today we'll have to do with our own salvation. Amen, brethren. With our own salvation. The salvation of your brother. Let God deal with it. You just pray for it. But do not observe the speck in your brother's eye. Look at your own plank. And if you take it out, then you'll have found grace by God. Then you would have humbled yourself. Then God would have freed you. 
then you'll be useful for God. You'll be like Jeremiah the prophet, who did not see the speck in Zedekiah's eye, but he cried and prayed for the salvation of Zedekiah. The result pearls in your life. Holiness, pureness. Be careful, but these gifts of God and the grace of God that there is in your life, be careful. Be careful. They are precious. Do not put them in danger. You've got nothing to do with swine or with dogs. Separate yourself from the world. Separate your life from the world. Depart from this wicked age. You have inside of you a pearl. The good pearl who is Christ. You have exceedingly strength inside of you. In a vessel of clay. The Holy Spirit. What have you got to do with the world? What have you got to do with the prince of this world and his children? Don't you know that what is holy and it has been given unto you and the pearls in what, that you have, if you give them before them, then the swine and the dogs will trample them. They will disgrace them. They will insult them. They will mock them. They will leave you naked. Why are you leaving Jerusalem and why are you going to Jericho? Thieves will come. They will wound you. They will harm you. They will leave you half dead. Remain, brother. Remain in the presence of God. Remain in the church of Christ. Remain in the doctrine of the apostles, the breaking of bread, fellowship and in prayers, so you can be in safety and your decisions to be made with the guidance of the Holy Spirit towards total blessings. Remain, brother. Today, my brethren, I say it again, let's work out our salvation in fear and trembling. My brethren, There's nothing good outside of the Word of God. There's nothing bad inside the Word of God. Let me say it rightly. You cannot find something bad in the Word of God. You cannot find something good in the words of the false prophets of this world. You cannot serve two masters. You cannot walk on two roads. The Holy One is separated from this world. Be holy as I am holy, says the Lord. Come out of Babylon. You know why God told them this? Because even though He took the Israelites to Babylon for 70 years of trial, but there, God held them there in great blessings because this was His plan. They were used to Babylon, and the time when time came for them to return to Jerusalem, they would not come out. We're having a good time now. Remember Lot's wife. She would not come out of Sodom and Gomorrah. The angel took her out by force. But her just soul was tortured. And Lot's soul, righteous soul, was tortured of what he saw and heard. But destruction was coming. They did not work out their salvation in fear and trembling. God did take them out by grace. But He said to them, don't look back. That's what the Holy Spirit is saying to us today. Don't look back, brother. Don't turn back, sister. Lot's wife became a pillar of salt. Remember Lot's wife. But was her mistake so big? It's not a matter of big or small mistake, my brethren. It's a matter for us to work out our salvation in fear and trembling. A tree, a good tree, cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. But a tree, 
that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Look at Zedekiah. Now, the Word of God will bring us before the reality of our personal lives. And a question, hard, catalytic, will touch our hearts. What is your fruit, my beloved brother? From this, you will understand what tree you are. What is your fruit? What fruit do you bring forth? If you now were standing before Christ, what would you hold in your hands? What is your boldness? What is your life? And let's make the same question in a softer way, but in a truth way. Are you pleased, my child, from the fruit that you bring forth? Are you pleased with your work? And our answer is, my beloved brethren, in boldness. Unfortunately, no, Lord. Unfortunately, no, Lord. Glory to God. This is good. This is the beginning of humility. Oh, this is the beginning that I will stand now before God and say, Lord, help me. Without you, I have done nothing and I could do nothing. King Nebuchadnezzar is outside with his army. There's a famine. There's destruction. Is there hope of salvation? And the answer is, Amen. There is. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. There is, my brethren, the blood of Jesus Christ, the voice of the Holy Spirit, the glory of God. Today is the right day. Today is the day of salvation. We can call out, Lord, spare your people. Forgive me. Help me stand before you, not like Zedekiah, but like Jeremiah. Jeremiah, my beloved brother, did not enjoy the palaces that Zedekiah had. Jeremiah enjoyed the depths of prison. He was in the narrow gate in the difficult way. Zedekiah enjoyed his banquets and nice food. He was in the wide gate and broad way. Where am I? Where are you? Wake up! Where are you? Where are you? Where am I? Hallelujah. Lord, I want to be where you want me to be then. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. And if you, being wicked, when your children come to you and ask bread, will you give them a stone? If they ask fish from you, will you give them a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask Him? He who is good, won't He give you good things? Won't He solve your problems? Won't He heal you? Won't He take your fears and your anxieties? Won't He correct your mistakes? Won't He take care of everything in your life? Won't He heal your body, your soul and your spirit? Won't He give you love? Won't He give you joy? Won't He give you peace? Will you be able to overcome? Won't He give you victory? Every good gift and every perfect gift comes from above from the Father of Lights. You cannot obtain good, only God can give them to you. You cannot obtain good fruit, only if God gives it to you. You cannot obtain eternal life if God doesn't give it to you freely. Hallelujah. And we have lots of joy. Because our lives are not dependent on what we own, our might, our wealth and our wisdom. 
word to us if it was like that. Our life depends on our Lord and our God. From He who loves us with everlasting love and drew us with mercy today, my brethren. Let's not harden our hearts, but let's humble ourselves before God. And if one of us feels that he has done all the will of God, let him say in humility, I am a useless servant, because I do not do anything more from what I was obligated to do, what I owed to do, because you gave me so much, Lord, and you already give me much more goods. How foolish this wealthy man was. So eat, drink, and be merry. You have many goods and possessions for many years. And what amazement that night, knock, 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 God was before him. Poor man, foolish man. The demons are outside and they're demanding for your soul. Now, too late. My beloved brethren, today Christ is in our midst and He's claiming not only our souls but for us to be blessed. He's claiming His glory in our lives. He has rebuked the devil. He has bound the evil spirits. He has preached freedom. He has given eternal life. And now He's crying out, whoever wants to follow me, Come, but first he must deny himself, pick up his cross, and follow me. Do you want this brother? Do you want this brother? Do you want this brother to deny yourself, your opinion, your wisdom, your might, your wealth, your holiness as you think you are holy? Because learn that if you prophesy, this doesn't justify you. If you preach, if you perform miracles, this doesn't justify you. What does justify you is what you work. If you work, what is just? If you love mercy, and if you walk with your God humbly. Because in that day, when the trumpet will be heard and the door will be closed, many will cry out, Lord, Lord, open up to us. Just think of their tragic position. We prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name. But the true voice of God is, Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. I have never known you. Because you did not prophesy, I did. You did not perform miracles, I did. You did not cast out demons, I did. You practiced lawlessness. I've never known you. Learn to do what is good. Learn to love mercy. Learn to walk humbly with your Lord and your God. Because he who calls out Lord, Lord shall not enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. He who hears today with all cautiousness the word of God and is ready to execute it. But I prophesied, are you ready to do? I preached, are you ready to execute the word? Are you ready to say, help me Lord do what is just. Help me Lord to love mercy. Help me Lord to walk humbly your way. Otherwise, you'll be like King Zedekiah who built on the sand because he despised the prophetical word. He despised Jeremiah. He despised the voice of the Holy Spirit. He followed the voice of the false prophets. And the rain descended. The floods came. The winds blew and beat on that house. And the house was built on sand and it fell. And what nice words and great was it for. Can you imagine a bigger fall than the fall of Zedekiah? King! Before his eyes, his children and family were slaughtered. Before his eyes, 
his friends and his princes were slaughtered before his eyes. His houses were destroyed, his goods, the temple of God and the walls of Jerusalem. And when he saw all these things, they blinded him. And they threw him blind in prison. His fall was great. Can you imagine a greater fall? Yes, brethren. For me not to be in the rapture of the church. Today, therefore, today, my beloved brethren, with fear and trembling, now that we will stand before the communion of the body and blood of Jesus Christ, let's work out our own salvation. Each one his own salvation. Leave the specks. Leave judgment, criticizing aside. Leave measuring aside. Don't observe anything else but only your own plank in your own eye. Let's find grace by God. We cannot take it out, but let Christ take it out and help us in that day to be ready. Ready for the rapture of the church and to make a stable decision from now on, all of us, to try and find, or say it rightly, to always try and find the narrow gate, the difficult way which leads, though, to everlasting life. Amen.